Today I'm talking to Dr. Joe Fowler, a research director with the Coretta Research Project at the Savannah Science Museum in the United States to celebrate World Turtle Day. Turtles are my absolute favorite animal. I once helped rescue a newly hatched sea turtle at Vero Beach in Florida. My mom said that you've been working nights researching turtles and that you probably just woke up. What are you studying right now? Well, thanks for having me on. Happy World Turtle Day to you as well. Um, I am studying loggerhead sea turtles on an island off of Georgia. Um, we patrol the beach all night long to intercept the females that come up to lay their eggs. So even though turtles spend most of their time in the ocean, they still lay their eggs on land. So what we do is we go out at night to intercept the females and collect data from them and also protect their nests. They lived in the time of dinosaurs over 200 million years ago. How old do turtles live? Mm -hmm. Well, turtles um, have lived for about 200 million years, 210 million years, something like that, like you said. Sea turtles have been around for about 110 million years, so they also overlap with dinosaurs. Sea turtles are a special group of turtles that live in the ocean, of course. Um, so in terms of sea turtles, our best guesses on how long sea turtles live are right around the 60, 70, 80 years at a maximum. So what you hear on Finding Nemo, 150 years and still young, um, is probably not the case for sea turtles. We know that our females are reaching maturity. Uh, they, we, they come up to, to nest at about 30 years. And then the, theme, the longest nesting females we have are right around 30, 35 years. So our best guess is, is the oldest individuals are around 35 or 65 years of age. Now, other freshwater turtle species might live a few decades. And then some tortoises, another special type of turtle, will live, they can live over 100 years, maybe 150 years. We know that the Galapagos tortoises um, and the Aldabra tortoises, these are the really big land-dwelling tortoises, can live quite a long time. Wow. Apparently, they can migrate thousands of kilometers between feeding grounds and nesting beaches. Mm -hmm. Which types of turtles are in danger? Yeah, so uh, most sea turtle species have a long migratory phase. So when they, when they leave the beach as hatchlings, they swim way offshore into the open ocean, uh, thousands of kilometers out into the open ocean, and they stay there for, well, for loggerheads about 10 years. And then they come back over to the area where they hatched and they grow up a bit more before they start to lay eggs themselves. So that long migratory period is the really long one is for the young, the young turtles. And then the old turtles will do shorter migrations from wherever they lay eggs to wherever they feed, wherever they find their food. Um, so that's where the, that's the migratory part of it. All seven sea turtle species are currently classified as endangered. Some of them, some of populations are considered critically endangered, like the Pacific leatherback and the Pacific hawksbill. So some sea turtles are doing quite well, and some sea turtles aren't doing very well. In terms of turtles in general, there's around 360 species of turtle, believe it or not, and 127 of them are considered either endangered or critically endangered. So that's a pretty high percentage of our turtles in, our, in the world who are at risk of extinction. Yeah. So they survived 200 million years, but not us? Right. Wow. Yep. We put a lot of pressure on turtles, whether it's, um, you know, you see turtles crossing the road and sometimes they get hit by cars. Um, there are a lot of people that like to own turtles as pets. So there's a very significant global trade of turtles where they can be captured from the wild and moved into the pet trade. And that has really big impacts on the populations. For sea turtles, um, we have um, turtles that get caught in, in fisheries. So whether it's a shrimp trawler or a long line fishery, the turtles get caught in those and then they can, they can die. Um, we also have boat strikes and climate change, a lot, of, a lot of factors that are affecting turtle populations. You know, they have very slow life cycles, right? So like we said before, it takes them 30 years between when they're a hatchling and when they lay eggs. So there's a lot of opportunities to, especially when they're little, to be um, 
prey to predators like sharks or birds, um, and then to be uh, caught in fisheries and things like that before they reach the time where they are going to produce the next generation. So their life cycle makes it really hard for them to um, to suffer threats when they're larger. When you when you see a lot of turtles that are being hurt by humans or killed by humans um, at later stages, then the population can go down very quickly. And so their life cycle isn't conducive to um, um, responding very well to human pressures. And so, like we said before, those human pressures are fisheries bycatch, boat strikes, plastic pollution, um, climate change. Um, so there's a lot of threats that are impacting turtles, not just naturally, you know, sharks and things like that, but things that we add on top of that. The leatherback can grow up to eight feet and 2,000 pounds. They live on jellyfish. Yeah, so jellyfish are sort of, you know, they can be very small and some of them can be huge, you know, so some of them live, live deep down and they can be really big, but they are a very primitive organism that's made up of sort of jelly-like structures with a lot of water. So it's very interesting that such a large turtle eats almost only jellyfish. But the way they get around this is that they eat a lot of jellyfish. If they find a, a group of jellyfish, which is called a smack, a smack of jellyfish, they will just eat, 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 eat as much as they can when they find that. And they'll also dive deep to find those big jellyfish where they can, they can, uh, you know, withstand the pressure of the deep ocean and, and find a lot of food. So even though they're quite big and they actually grow quite fast compared to some of the other sea turtles, they find a lot of nutrition in eating a lot of jellyfish. Wow. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. I've, I've seen one here on Wausau um, a few years ago and they're so long and they're, they're huge, they're very wide. Their crawl they leave on the beach is wider than I am tall. And uh, they're just amazing. They're ancient, you know, turtles and they are open ocean wanderers. So they could just swim all over the ocean uh, looking for their jellyfish prey. What can kids do to help save turtles? Mm -hmm. Well, kids um, can certainly encourage their parents to do a lot of things. Reducing your plastic waste is a really good one reducing your carbon footprint. So um, reducing your impact on, on human induced climate change is, is a big one. That's, that's an emerging threat that we're trying to monitor uh, with sea turtles. And uh, so anything you can do to reduce your carbon footprint is good. Um, reducing or eliminating the amount of unsustainable fish that you eat or shrimp that you eat is good because those fisheries catch a lot of turtles as well as dolphins and sharks and seabirds. Um, that's a really big one. If you have a, if, if your parents have a boat, you could tell them to go slow for those below. So any, the slower you go in the boat, the better chance a turtle or a manatee or a dolphin can get out of the way. Um, so those are some important things that you can put pressure on your, your parents or your older loved ones, your adult loved ones to do. Um, when you're on the, if you're a, if you're a kid and you like to go to the beach, probably love to build sand castles. And in order to build a sand castle, you have to dig the sand out of the beach and make a pile, right? Well, yeah. that, leaves a, that leaves a hole, like a, like a hole in the sand. And little sea turtles can get stuck in there. And adult sea turtles, if the hole's big enough, can as well. And then also turtle researchers who are walking around the beach at night can trip and fall in those holes as well. Um, so fill it, once you've built your sand castle and you're ready to go, you can put your sandcastle back in that hole and flatten it out. That way the turtles can't get stuck in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what is the coolest thing you know about them? I think their migrations, like we already talked about, are amazing. You know, they are going from one beach where they hatched. When they're in the egg, they actually orient to the Earth's magnetic field. You know how the Earth has a magnetic field around it? Yeah. So in that egg, they, can, they develop their magnetic map. And then when they go out in the open ocean and grow up for a while, when they come back around, they use that magnetic map to come back to, to the area where they hatched. So their migratory abilities are really amazing. That's what I think is so cool about sea turtles. Cool.
Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any funny stories about being a turtle biologist? Um, well, there's a lot of uh, fun sort of mishaps that happen in the field sometimes. Um, I can remember one from Australia when I was working in between a few summers out here. I had gone out there and uh, we were bringing eggs back to the lab to measure them. And it was raining, raining cats and dogs. And so I thought, well, the best way to do this is to put my wetsuit on. You know, the, the suits you wear when you go scuba diving? Yeah. So I put that on and ran down to the beach to get the eggs and brought that, them back up to the research station, but nobody was there. So I had to go to the visitor center. And the visitor center had like 300 people at it who had come to see turtles, um, but they were stuck inside because it was raining. And I come running in off the beach in my wetsuit with a bucket of eggs. And I think I really scared some people because I just came out of the, out of the darkness and into the, the, the uh, visitor center and scared everybody with my bucket of eggs. That was one that I could, I could come up off the top of my head. But there's lots of fun stories from the field. Anytime you're working out in the, in the wild, you're, you're, you've got rain and bugs and sleep deprivation and you know, people like that come to help us, volunteers, they're out of their element and we, uh, we have all sorts of fun stories. Yeah. Why do we need turtles aside from their awesomeness? Mm -hmm. Well, I completely agree we need them for their awesomeness, but uh, turtles play a lot of important roles in the ecosystem. So when they're little, a lot of things eat them, them and their eggs. Um, and when they're big, big things like sharks eat them. So they play a role as prey to a lot of other species, which, you know, just like a turtle, they have to eat to generate their, feed their babies, you know? So they play an important role as prey. They play an important role as predators. So when they get big, they're eating lots of stuff off the bottom, crabs and, and snails and things. So they have a role as prey. Um, they also have an important role in our heritage, you know? If you live along the coast, you know that um, um, a lot of indigenous communities, you know, turtles are a really important part of their history. Um, turtles, because they live so long, are a sign of longevity. So a lot of communities use turtles as like a, almost like a good luck charm for longevity in their own lives. And so turtles have played a really important role in coastal uh, indigenous communities. Um, and so we want to keep them around for that, that cultural heritage aspect as well. Wow. Thanks so much for joining me today, Dr. Fowler. And remember, together kids can save the world. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. What you're doing. Bye. Okay, see ya.